Hey there guys, it's Tina and I'm back and I hope you guys are all doing great. So if you are also back, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. But if you're new and you like what you see, consider subscribing because we post videos every single week and we have fun hair in the Fancy Fan. So today, I am reviewing the new Patrick Ta Major Dimension Eyeshadow Palette. I know, I know. This is a new neutral palette that was released by Patrick Ta. Patrick Ta makes some of my favorite cheek products. So of course I was intrigued by this release since this is his first venture into eye products. I was like, all right, let's see what Patrick can bring to the table. And he gave us this beautiful, shiny, reflective palette. So what I'm gonna do is go through swatches of the palette, show you the packaging up close and personal, read through the details with you as well as the pricing and availability, and then we're going to do two looks featuring this palette, and I will wrap up with my final thoughts. And since we have a lot going on in this video, I will go ahead and leave timestamps down below so you can jump ahead to whichever section you're most interested in. So I'm gonna start Start out with the product details. So like I mentioned, this is from Patrick Ta and it is his new Major Dimension Eyeshadow Palette. And it specifically says eyeshadow palette so you don't have to worry about any of those ingredients that may not be safe for use around the eyes. Everything here is meant for use around the eyes. It retails for $68. I know that is steep, yes. And we have two different formulations in this palette. We have cream and powder. So each of the creams are point 0.065 ounce or 1.85 grams a piece and then we have 10 powder eyeshadows that are 0 0.06 ounce or 1.8 grams a piece which is actually a larger than a typical small eyeshadow on the market so I think you're getting a pretty decent amount of product in this palette but again, it's $68, which is a little bit steep, and you're getting 12 total shades in this palette. So take that for what it's worth. It's up to you whether or not this is worth that $68 price point. It is available for purchase online at Sephora.com and also on the Patrick Ta website, and it is also available in select Sephora stores, so you can just pop in and pick this up in case you are interested. On the Patrick Tall website though, I was able to get 15% off my purchase, so I was able to grab this at a discounted price, and I was also able to get free shipping, and it came pretty quickly. So I would recommend if you wanna get a little bit of a discount, go through the Patrick Tall website, but if you wanna test it out and you're not too sure, Sephora is gonna have a better return policy. Just putting that out there in case you wanted to try this for yourself. All right, let's talk about the packaging, which is in the signature rose gold color that Patrick Ta loves dearly. All his blush duos and bronzer duos are in this reflective gold packaging, so it makes sense to roll over into his eyeshadow palette. And it is fingerprint prone, so you will be busy trying to remove fingerprints to keep it looking pristine, so it's not always gonna look this reflective and beautiful. But on the front, it has Patrick Ta four eyes, and on the back, we have a rose gold label with the shade names and the size and information as well as the manufacturing details. And this palette has an intended usage life of 12 months. Inside we have a full-sized mirror, which is actually really great if you're going to use this to apply eyeshadows. I think it's high quality and I think it's a great addition. I just prefer not to have mirrors in palettes because I don't use them and I think it's just a better way to work with the environment and try to be a little bit more sustainable. But that's just me, I know some people really like having mirrors in their palette specifically for applying their eyeshadow. Then below we have the two cream eyeshadows and the 10 powder eyeshadows laid out. There are no eyeshadow names actually printed on the palette so you have to refer to the label in the back which is kind of tricky to read because you have to read it in reverse you know like just know that it's not gonna line up one-to-one -one on the back to the front you have to flip it over. It's a whole to do okay. So we have the two cream shadows on the far left side and those have a little plastic flap 
that covers them and protects them from getting powder or glittery eyeshadows into them which I think is a great touch if you're going to include a cream product in a palette or a duo with a powder product make sure that you have something that protects them from getting the powder inside the cream because that can really mess with the finish and the texture and then we have the 10 powder eyeshadows and the bottom row has his logo debossed into each of the pants so the packaging closes with a snap fit closure at the front so this is not magnetized at all and I think overall the packaging is really pretty it's sleek it's sexy it's fingerprint prone but that's fine it's still very beautiful and it has a nice weight to it so it doesn't feel cheap and lightweight the box itself is also metallic rose gold and it has all the details on the product as well as the ingredient list and looking at the ingredients quickly he does not have PET in the formulation, but there is synthetic fluoroflogopite and mica, which will give those sparkly shades their little extra bling. And it says here, luminous creams, iridescent metallics, glistening pearls, and velvet mattes in a single versatile palette Wear alone or layer, blend and contour to create the most multi-dimensional looks that go from day to night. It says using a brush, apply eyeshadows and blend as desired. Each shade can be worn alone or layered together for optimal depth and dimension. So it goes on to say that one of Patrick Ta's signature techniques for creating his naturally contoured glowing looks is to artfully layer creams and powders. The beautifully blendable shadows and creams in this collection allow you to create the most striking multi-dimensional looks with just one palette and the two cream based colors that are included are meant to help you really sculpt and intensify your eye looks so we have two luminous cream bases we have a few velvety matte shades some iridescent metallic eyeshadows and also glistening pearl topper so we have four different textures included in this palette which is meant to give you that multi-dimensional textural look so let me go through the different shades so the two cream shades that are included are lady and woman lady is a lighter tan brown shade that leans a little bit on the cool tone side and then woman is a deeper richer chocolatey brown it's not too rich or deep though but this one leans more on the warm tone caramelly chocolate side then we have four mattes that are included we have scandal which is a rich chocolatey deep brown mother is a red based orangey almost brick brown absolutely is a rosy tone tan and transition is a light leaning neutral tone beige then we have the iridescent metallic eyeshadows and I think three of the shades in here would fall under that category so we have divine which is a light peachy ivory shade with pearl and a silvery fine sparkle it is more like a satin base with that sparkle on top and then we have lavish which is also that kind of satiny base it is like a light peachy tan with fine pearl sparkle and maybe a little bit of a champagne -y pink then we have exquisite this one is a little bit richer, a little bit creamier and more pigmented. It has more of a metallic base versus the other two which are more satin lean and matte. This one is a beautiful warm tone bronze with yellow gold shimmer. It's heavily packed in there. It's a beautiful shade. And then the three topper shades we have Legendary which is a pinky champagne duochrome. And then we have Opulence, which is a chunky peach shade with golden sheen. And then we have Abundance, which is a light icy yellow gold with peachy and pinky duochrome to it. This one is also a chunky shade. So now that you've seen all the swatches, heard all the details, seen the packaging up close and personal, let's go ahead and jump into the two looks that I created using this palette. And I'll also give you some of my initial thoughts just applying these eyeshadows and once I show you the two looks we'll go ahead and wrap up with my final thoughts so let's go ahead and jump into look number one all right guys so let's go ahead and start out with the first look using this palette and I'm not quite sure where to start there are a bunch of medium tone shades and dark tones in this palette there's not really a light tone and I don't know we're just gonna wing it so I'm gonna of course try out the cream shades so let's try out the lighter cream which is lady and I'll apply this with an expert concealer brush 
from Real Techniques. So this is a brown tone cream product and it doesn't say how to apply these. It just says layer and blend the shades however you choose for a multi-dimensional look. So I'm assuming that that means I can layer the powders over the creams or vice versa because with Patrick Ta's other like cream blush duos you're meant to layer the cream over the powder so I'm guessing it's the same way here but I'm gonna default to what I'm comfortable with which is going in with a cream first and then pop in on the powder shades but we can mix it up and see how it works as well so this shade is not as pigmented as I expected it to be it actually applies pretty sheerly so I thought it was gonna be just way too deep on my eyelid as a eyeshadow base because I tend to go either my skin tone or slightly lighter and this actually I really like that because it gives a slight shadow to the eyes but it's not too deep okay I actually really like that since that didn't end up being too deep let's go in with the other cream shade which is woman same brush and I'm going to apply that on the outer V area okay so it adds a little bit of color but it's not too deep either. Very interesting. And I'm sure you can mix these shades together to create like an in-between shade as well. But I'm kind of just blending that on the outer V to add some dimension, which is kind of the signature Patrick Ta technique is to layer and blend, which is actually a makeup artist technique. You layer and blend and build. You don't just go one step, two step, color in the lines, you know? So... Yeah, I think the creams look pretty nice. They apply pretty sheerly. I have very oily lids and I already see like a little bit of settling into lines but not necessarily creasing. So I wouldn't use these as an eyeshadow base on their own. I would actually go in with an eyeshadow primer like the Urban Decay Primer Potion beforehand and then layer this on top. The primer potion will help prevent creasing and then these can act as a base rather than a primer. All right, now let's go in with the shade Transition which sounds like the perfect shade to start out with. And I'm gonna pick that up. Up on my brush and these eyeshadows are actually pretty easy to pick up on the brush it's a little bit looser in the pan so you don't have to go in aggressively because then you're gonna just kick up a ton of powder that just gives me a wash in the crease area it's not getting crepey or anything being laid over that cream so that's a good thing so far next to transition we have absolutely so let's try it I don't know what to expect from these shades as far as pigmentation so I'm just layering this up. I wouldn't normally go in with this second shade because we already have the transition shade down, but I wanted to see if this would do anything different, like it would give me a different color. And it's just given me a little bit more warmth than the transition shade. Yeah, this one just has a warmer undertone to it. So if you wanted like a warmer look, you would go in with that one but it doesn't really show a big difference between that and the transition shade. So with that being said, let's go in with a deeper shade. This is Mother, and then I'm going to grab Scandal. So we're gonna go with these two shades next. Again, they pick up pretty nicely, so let's just tap this on the outer V. That's a, yeah, that's a pigmented shade. Let's see if it blends nicely. Mm, it's patching up a little bit, just a little, nothing crazy. And I don't know if that may have to do with the cream that we applied and like the other shades. All right, it's smoothing out, so crisis averted. But I think the cream underneath this is not my favorite so far. The cream is a little bit more tacky, so it's gonna cling a little bit more, so you just have to be careful with how you blend. You're just gonna have to build and blend and be patient with the colors. And now I'll go in with a smaller crease brush. This is from Sonia G. This is the classic crease and the dark brown shade, which is Scandal. And apply that to the outer V and outer C area just to create some depth and dimension. That actually applies pretty nicely. That's nice, yes. So I thought the colors were getting a little bit patchy, but it just needed to be layered up a little bit to smooth out. So that's not an issue. That is nice. And with Patrick Ta, he does very simple looks. But of course, on YouTube, when you're testing out products, you try to go extra with it, like you layer up all kinds of things. But it's not necessary. Like most looks, you can just complete with two or three eyeshadows. That is nice. All right, so shimmer time. All right, I'm gonna go in with this kind of bronzy shade, which is exquisite. This one has an interesting texture. It has micro shimmer in it, 
and it's like a powder eyeshadow but it's not a true frost shade it has like a looser texture and when I swatched it I was like oh it feels really nice so I want to see how it applies and yeah that applies pretty nicely I feel like I'm gonna get fallout from it though because of the micro shimmer in it because it is so loose but I'm hoping that with the cream down it sticks down on my eyelids but we're gonna see as we work with the shade it's not falling down on my face so far and it's a pretty color it's a little bit richer though so it's not gonna give you like a light illumination to your lids and then I'll go in with this other texture this is legendary this one is a little bit different if you can see on the brush with the texture so we're gonna pop that on the inner lid so we have the exquisite shade kind of on the outer lid now we're going with the inner lid with this shade it's a looser shimmer I don't know if you can let me zoom in a little bit oh I was too far all this time so this one is a flaky texture so it's one of those loose topper shades that we've been seeing a lot lately I don't love that apply dry yeah, it's very sparse and very, mm, I don't love that. It is time to layer the cream thing and see how that works. So I'm gonna pop the cream on. I'm using the lighter shade, which is Lady. I'm just gonna pop that where we had the shimmer down. And then I'm gonna use my finger, which I hate doing, and press that flakier shimmer over the cream. I really hate using my fingers. I prefer to use a brush, but I feel like these shadows definitely need a finger application just because it's so loose it needs either a damp brush or a finger to apply the shade for it to really smooth out and it's smoothing out nice enough and the cream doesn't feel crepey or anything so i mean that's not a bad application right let me go in with my finger and the exquisite shade on the outer lid Fingers really make shimmer sink. Like they apply really nicely with a finger. I just don't like putting my finger in my products. It's just not my thing. All right, so that applied pretty nicely. I'm just going back in with the dark brown shade just to blend the edge. There is some fallout on my cheeks. Like I have some sparkle that's fallen down, but I didn't do my foundation yet. So that may not be an issue if you do eyeshadow first, but if you do foundation first just be mindful that the little shimmer will fall down all right for the brow highlight i'm gonna use the shade divine which is this light shade this is also like a different texture it's not quite a matte it has micro shimmer in it which i'm not loving actually i don't like these textures but i'm just gonna use it as a brow bone highlight since it's kind of the only shade in the palette that i can use for that it has that oh my god if you don't like shimmer on the brow bone forget it there is sh ooh, uh, uh and that shimmer is falling everywhere see I don't like these shades it's kind of a matte shade or a satin shade with glitter in it but it's micro fine glitter so it's not too chunky but I don't like that ooh mm -mm. all right let me clean off my face and we'll be back to finish up the eyes I'm back and my mascara and lashes are on on my upper lashes but we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of something on the lower lash line nothing too crazy though I don't think so I'm just gonna grab the two deepest matte shades so we have scandal and mother and I'm just gonna run that the first shade which is mother on the lower lash line this is the red brown shade and then grab a little bit of scandal on the very outer edge of the lash line and that's it i'm just gonna do lower lash mascara and that's the finished look so here you have the eyes completely done and i do think the shimmer on the lids actually turned out really pretty it's prettier than i expected when i applied it with my finger i was able to smooth it out quite a bit and i like that there is like multi-dimensional shimmer to the color it's really pretty actually so here are the eyes i really like it and i'm gonna finish up the face and show you what it looks like with a lip on all right so here you have it guys this is the final look with a really deep vampy lip like get into this can you even right now 
I think the eyeshadow looks really beautiful. I do like it. It's more of a subtle, smoky brown eyeshadow look, which is really pretty. And the shimmer on the lids hasn't actually fallen down anymore on my cheeks. So after initial application, I don't have any more fallout, which is actually a good sign because I've been wearing this eyeshadow look for about an hour now, which goes to show that we may get some longevity out of these shimmer eyeshadows without getting fallout all over our face, which is what we want to avoid, right? So I think it looks stunning and with this lip, like, what? Wednesday Adams who? What? I really, really like this. I think it is stunning. Again, I was really surprised by the shimmer shades because I didn't really expect a lot from them applying them with a brush, but once I went in with my finger, they really applied beautifully and I think... It's a really stunning, stunning look. So let's go ahead and do a second look because that's what we're here for, right? We're really gonna test out this palette and use some of the other shades. All right, guys, so now it's time for look number two and I'm going to try to use the other shades that we haven't used so far. Let's start out with the Lady Cream Base and I'll just apply that all over my lid with the angled concealer brush from Anissa Beauty. This cream base is again very lightly pigmented. It's not as heavy duty as it looks in the pan, so you can feel free to apply it on the lids. Of course, if you're my skin tone, if you're any lighter, then this is of course gonna look deeper on you. But for me, it just gives a beautiful wash of color to the lids, evens out my lids and preps it for the eyeshadow. So let's start out with this medium brown shade, absolutely. And I'll apply this using my large detail pro brush from Sonia G. And I'm just gonna apply this, concentrating it on the outer V and outer crease area. I'm not really using a transition shade this time around like we did last time. I'm just going straight in and building my matte outer crease and outer V. I'll grab a little bit of Mother. And again, we're just gonna apply that on the outer V, outer C area. Just building that color up lightly, not applying too much. I don't think I'm going in for a dark look today. I'm doing pretty much a smoky daytime look, which still has a darker outer V, but it's not as rich and deep as like we did before. Now let's go in with the shade Divine, which we only use as a brow bone shade so far. And I'm picking that up on a large shader brush. This is the Worker 2 from Sonia G. And I'm applying that on the inner lid area. So this texture I'm not loving because it has the micro shimmer again. It's not really a matte and I don't really like it because the shimmer and glitter kind of goes everywhere. It doesn't stick to the lid. It just goes flying all over the place. So it's like you could have just done without it. And yeah, it's creating like a, hmm, an interesting texture. I don't know if you guys can see that. Right there, it created like a harsh line which all I did was apply the cream eyeshadow, so I don't like that. I'll try to blend it out as much as I can. Let's see if it blends away. But it's like the glittery specks are clinging to that area, which is no bueno for me. I don't like that. Mm -mm. Let me try to go back in with the brush that we used with the cream shade to go over that and kind of clean it up a bit. I do not like that, ooh, mm-mm, mm, -mm, mm -mm. So that's the first real flop. Let's try the shade Lavish instead. It has a similar texture to that lighter shade, but it's a little bit more smooth. It doesn't have as much of the glitter particles, and it's applying a lot better, almost like a matte shade. But yeah, the sparkle is still flying everywhere. I don't like that at all. Yikes. All right, what I'm gonna do is grab another shimmer shade that we haven't used. This is Opulence. This one has the flaky texture of the other shimmers we've used. And I'm going to apply that to the lid space. Maybe I should go in with my finger like we did before with the other shades. Yeah, that definitely helps to press the color onto the lid so that it sticks rather than flies all over the place. So right away, I already know these shades are just, you just have to go in with your finger. You won't be able to apply them nicely with a brush at 
all which is actually not my preferred way let me see how they apply damp so I'll just dampen my brush a little bit and I'll try to pick up the shade on the brush which it doesn't really pick up in the pan kind of creates hard pan instead but mm, yeah I don't let me try a stiffer brush yeah it picks up a ton of product but yeah that applies a little bit better this is a synthetic brush instead it is very flaky though I don't mm, I don't like that these are definitely gonna have to be topper shades or shades that you apply with your finger instead because they're not really the best with brushes I mean once they are on they're pretty but I have fallout all over my face as you would expect from these shades so all right now we're gonna try the final shimmer shade which is abundance I'm going in with a small detail brush to get that on the inner tear duct it is so flaky and ugly <laughs> I'm sorry oh my god it's not cute okay I dampened my brush a little bit again just to see if I can get that to look a little prettier and by that I mean smoother not necessarily that it's an ugly shade I mean the texture of it whoo it is leaving a lot to be desired I'm telling you right now it's very flaky oh my god I don't love that at all like look at this chunk right here like what are we doing Patrick what is this what did no no I don't mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. So I'm going to clean off all this fallout. And the thing about sparkle fallout, it's like glitter. So it sticks to the skin. It's a little bit easier to remove, but it's still like all over your face. I don't... Again, once they're on, like they're pretty. But I don't need to be doing all that work. Okay, Patrick? Let me go in with a touch of scandal. I said I wasn't going dark and deep, but I'm now I'm upset, so now I have to darken it up. I'm not going in as dark as we did in the first look, but I'm just adding a little bit of extra depth. I do like the matte shades. I do like the matte deep shades. The shimmers, though, not my favorite. All right, let me go and apply my foundation and all that good stuff and we'll be back to finish up the eyes all right so my face is done I'm waiting on my lashes so let's quickly pop on some color on the lower lash line so I'm gonna grab the shade mother here I'm not going to do anything crazy I'm just gonna run that on the lower lash line lightly again this is more of a daytime look so I'm not gonna do anything crazy on that lower lash line. And I actually feel like grabbing a little bit of exquisite as well. And I'll run that on the inner part of the lower lash line. That's just gonna give a little bit of a glowy effect. This shade is not one of the flaky ones, so it applies pretty nicely. All right, I'm gonna pop on my lashes, lower lash mascara, and I'm thinking about what I'm gonna put on the lower waterline, but I'll come back and show you the finished look. Hold on, hold on. Before I go, let me pop on a little bit of under brow highlight, and I am using the same one that we did before, which is the really light shade here, which I don't like the texture on the lid, but I think it works decently as a brow bone highlight. Again, the sparkles go everywhere, but it will do. My lashes are on, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish up everything and I'll be right back. All right guys, so here is the completed look with lips and face and everything done and applied. I didn't go in with any lower waterline liner, I just kept it light. And I think the eyes, yeah, they look pretty. It turned out pretty nicely. But overall, I'm just not in love with the texture of the eyeshadows and how they applied. It took some work to get them to smooth out and look as pretty as they do now. So not my favorite so far to work with. But I think the overall look did turn out well. It looks really pretty. It's just that the process to get there was my favorite. But with that being said, let me go ahead now and finish up with my final thoughts. 
All right, guys, so now that you have seen the packaging, the swatches, you've heard the details of the products, and you've seen the two looks that I created using this palette, I think I'm ready to share my final thoughts. Mm, I am so, so with this palette. I had quite a bit of trouble with the topper shades and the shimmer shades that I didn't quite like at all. I enjoyed the creams and I enjoyed the mattes, but is that enough for me to spend $68? For me, that's a big old no, so I'm glad I got the 15% off because if I paid full price for this, uh-uh, I would be so upset. As it stands, I can't really recommend this palette wholeheartedly, given the price point and the trouble that I had with the shades. Even though the looks turned out beautifully, okay? They looked really stunning at the end when I pressed and played and buffed and blended. They looked amazing. But is that something that you are going to do personally for $68? Is that something you want to be messing around with? Especially if you're a beginner or like a starter novice. Like, do you want to be bothered with these eyeshadows? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you have fun with putting your fingers in eyeshadows and you're fine with that application method. Maybe that's you. And maybe this neutral palette is calling your name. I don't know, maybe the textures intrigue you. Having creams and mattes and toppers and all these things, maybe they intrigue you. I personally am very disappointed. I know, I know, the looks were beautiful. I can't take that from them, but getting there was a pain in my tuka, so much so that I don't see myself necessarily reaching for this palette for those topper or shimmer shades because I have other palettes and other singles in my eyeshadow collection that will give me the same look or a similar look without all the work and just the tedious application. So I can't recommend this palette in good conscience, not for the price point and not for the looks that I was able to achieve from it, even though they were beautiful, because I feel like there are other palettes on the market that are at a much lower price point that can accomplish similar looks because there's nothing really stellar about this formulation apart from the creams that are included, which I really do like. And I am low key hoping that you will sell those individually because that would be great. But Makeup by Mario has his little primer sets that have the cream products that kind of work exactly the same as the Patrick Ta one, but the Patrick Ta shades are just slightly different. They aren't really pigmented, they aren't opaque, they won't like blank out your lids, they just give a nice wash of color, which I really like. But I can't use them as an eyeshadow primer, I have to use them as an eyeshadow base. Meaning I can't rely on them to keep my eyeshadow from creasing, because it will crease if I use it alone. I found that I have oily lids, they crease, okay, they crease. No questions asked, I do have to use an eyeshadow primer underneath them, such as my Urban Decay Anti-Aging Primer Potion, which is my go-to to prevent creasing of my eyeshadows. But overall, they worked well as a base to cling on to the eyeshadows. And like I said, the mattes performed beautifully. I loved how those blended. They applied really well. They are so pigmented, but they you can build them up. You know what I mean? It's not like punch you in the face, now you're struggling to blend. They apply and layer up beautifully. I love the mattes. The two satiny shimmer shades, I don't know what he was doing with those. So we have Divine and then Lavish. These two shades, oh my god, they were so awful. I really hate those shades. I wish those weren't included. They're so bad. They're really bad. I kicked them out of bed. I don't like them at all. Even on the brow bone, I mean, it gave a pretty look, but like, it wasn't enough for me to be like, yay, no, because sparkle was everywhere and it was just a hot mess. The other shade, though, that's kind of a similar formulation, Exquisite, which is a deep brown shade, that one is beautiful, that layers up nicely. It doesn't go flying all over the place, so that one is nice. But then the three topper shades, I had to apply them with a finger. There was no way I could get away with applying them with a brush, they just didn't pick up. They formed hard pan, so it's almost like you have to use a finger with those, which is what you saw in the demonstration. And once they applied and blended again, the looks were beautiful, but I just don't think the work is worth it. I mean, it's cute, it's cute. But $68, mm, not when you can probably get a Natasha Denona palette. I'm not saying, okay, I'm just saying. I'm comparing this price point to other palettes that we see on the market. You can get that Natasha Denona, what is it called, bronze palette or whatever, and you get, what, 15 shades, 
And from what I've heard, those perform really well. So why would you spend more to get this palette? You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Take that for what it's worth. I can't recommend this with any good conscience. I didn't enjoy it. I like the looks at the end, but I didn't enjoy the process. And I should enjoy the process of applying makeup. So there you have it. Those are my final thoughts. Let me know if you're interested in trying this palette out. If you have, what do you think? I know a lot of people were excited. They were like, oh my God, this looks so interesting. I am sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but I didn't like it. I ain't like it. I can't return it necessarily because it's from the Patrick Tall website and I don't completely hate it like the mattes are nice and the cream shadows, but I spent a lot of money for four little matte shadow and two cream. like. <laughs> Got me breaking into Jamaican because I can't deal. I can't deal. So whatever. I'm going to go ahead and leave links down below where you can pick them up. Those links are going to be through Sephora and Patrick Taw's website. If they have an asterisk next to them, that means that they are affiliate links, which means I will get a small sales commission if you make a purchase through those links. If you're shopping, I'm just saying consider shopping through my links because it does help to put right back into the channel. So I do appreciate you guys supporting the channel in that way. Another way you can support the channel, what was this? This, this is real awkward. Ooh. <laughs> so another way you can support is by subscribing, sharing with your friends, leaving a comment, favoriting, thumbs up, you know, all that good stuff. You know how, what to do. And if you want to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, I will leave the links down below as well so you can keep up with me. And again, hopefully this video was helpful. If you like it and you're not already subscribed, feel free to hit the subscribe button. And until my next video, which will be very soon, I'll talk to you. Bye guys. Ooh.